Hello everyone and welcome for this new episode of Teach Yourself to Draw. In this one we are going to talk about proportions, especially in the early stages of the drawing and what you can do to make sure that your proportions are correct if you're by yourself. Alright, so proportions in the early stages of a drawing and even in the end, it's one of the most difficult things that beginners have to face. And it's one of the most difficult thing anybody has to face, to be honest, like getting accurate proportions is, well, as difficult, let's say, as like tuning an instrument. I can say, hey, here's a tuning fork and here's a guitar, just tune it uh, by ear. And that's just, I would say that's the same level of difficulty. So if you're really good at music and if you have a good musical ear, uh, you're gonna have uh, an easy time tuning the, the guitar just with the tuning fork. But uh, if it's not the case and if you're le just learning, you're gonna have a, a really hard time. And this is kind of the same thing. In this video, I'm gonna talk about like fundamental visual landmarks that you can use to make sure that the proportions are correct. So let's start with the first thing that you're gonna need. And this is a very simple thing. It's been used for uh, hundreds of years. And this is a simple plumb line. So the plumb line is both the tool, the object itself, and also the imaginary line that you're going to use in the construction of your drawing. And it's going to be super helpful for proportions, but also for angles and for all sorts of things. It's like the spine of the drawing. When you get better, you probably won't use it anymore. But uh, since you're on your own and since you're still in the process of learning, the plumb line is one of the most effective tools that can help you get something with certainty in any of your drawings. So because the plumb line is always a perfect vertical, you can trust it 100% of the time. And really, there are no other lines that you can trust with the same level of certainty. So your entire strategy should be about the placement of your plumb line. You want to find the right spot to put it and the right spot to and the right way to use it. The plumb line doesn't have to be right in the middle. The plumb line needs to be at a point where it can cross interesting points or lines or shapes in the drawing that could be interesting. Don't put your plumb line anywhere. Try to find some interesting points that it can cross so that you can use these points as sort of visual landmarks in your drawing. Now, after you have your plumb line, you're going to try to find the top and bottom of your drawing to just make sure that you have the right proportions overall, like the right size. And top and bottom are easier to find than right and left. So you can't really trust right and left for the moment. Right now, it's a little bit too early to be sure about the width of your subject, but the, the height is a little bit easier to, to find and to make sure. It's not as easy, it's not the same level of certainty than the plumb line, of course, because the plumb line is an imaginary line. And right here, top and bottom, are actual lines that you have to spot. But with the side size technique, if you're using the side size technique, as I previously demonstrated in my last video, um, you're gonna have a much easier time spotting the top and bottom. So you're gonna start with this. Before I move on, if you like this video and if you want to see more content like this, you should know that this is only possible because I have amazing support on Patreon. I really want to thank all my patrons. If you want to join the Patreon, you're going to have access to the real-time version videos of these paintings. If you can't or if you don't want to join my Patreon, just know that there are things that you can do to help that won't cost you a penny. Like, subscribe, leave a comment to let YouTube know that this video is worth watching and uh, this really helps a lot. Now the next step is to find what I call anchor points or visual landmarks in your drawing. It can be lines, it can be points, it can be intersections, it can be anything that's easy to find. It's not, don't try to find 
the eye. Try to find the corner of the eye because it is a little pointy shape. And once you have this, try to find them and locate them like coordinates in a graph, like, you know, with an X axis and a Y axis and try to locate them and try to visualize the distance between this anchor point and the plumb line. Is the distance the same on your model and on your drawing? Now try to find the distance between the top point and your anchor point. Is this distance the same on your model and on your subject? And try to find the distance between the, the, the bottom point, the bottom line and your anchor point. Is this the same on your subject and on your model? Try to have this visual comparison. And this is all a, a, like a mental exercise to get accurate proportions that in the beginning is going to be very hard, but the more you do it and the more it feels natural and, and soon enough your eyes will naturally adjust and look all around the drawing for these types of, of distances and compare them. You compare your model and your subject like um, like really creating a realistic drawing works like this. It's by comparing the model and the subject. There's no way around it. And um, so to, to start, you're going to have to use the plumb line. Make sure that the distance between your anchor point and the plumb line is the same on your model and on your subject. Verify that with your eyes. You want to measure by using uh, a pencil like this and by placing your thumb, you're going to measure the distance and, and try to see if it's the same distance on your model and on your subject. This technique works really well. If you can avoid to touch the, the drawing board, that's much better because you're going to have a much easier time later on. And this is how you're going to proceed. You're going to try to find between five and 10 visual landmarks, anchor points that you're going to use. This, these are not necessarily points. These can be lines or anything, but things that you can be uh, quite sure about, like not something that you can be 100% sure because the only thing you can be 100% sure is the plumb line, but things that you have a decent level of certainty about like, all right, I have this key point because it's kind of close to the plumb line or because it's touching the plumb line, I can be more or less guaranteed that this placement here is correct. And next I'm going to try to find a point that's a little bit further. This one ha I have a little bit less certainty, but I'm going to use the previous point to locate the next point. And then I'm going to use another anchor point and try to locate the next point and so on. And use this strategy. The most certainty that you can ever have is the plumb line, top, bottom, find an anchor point that's close to the top, close to the bottom, close to the plumb line, and try to be as certain as possible with the first one and then the second one with a little bit it's going to be a little bit more difficult to place but try to use the placement of the first one that's the easiest to locate the next one and then try to locate the next one and the next one and at first it's not going to look really like a drawing it's not going to look like a face it's not going to look like a vase it's not going to look like a flower it's going to look like a, a bunch of uh, dots, tiny lines here and there. And once you have found all these points, once you have a decent level of certainty in all these points, you're going to place the, 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 the rest of the lines of your drawing around them and try to articulate the rest of the lines around them. And everything is going to unfold based on the level of certainty that you got from uh, working really hard on these anchor points and trying to be as precise and accurate. I'm sorry to say that uh, for realistic drawing, you have to be precise, you have to be accurate. Many people would just want to just follow their emotions and, and just be spontaneous. That's fine. That's fine after a certain point. But in the beginning, you really need a certain level of proportions, just like a musician. If you want to play a beautiful, uh, a beautiful song, with your guitar, you're probably going to have to tune it really well before you start playing. And that's the same thing with proportions. All right, I, that's it for this video. There would be so many things to talk about when it comes to proportions. So I'm just scratching the surface right here. I'm just talking about the fundamental ideas. 
but these ideas are super helpful and really they can make a huge difference so i hope they are helpful for you if you want to learn more you can join my patreon and you can access the real-time videos you can have extra content and see behind the scenes of my work uh, thank you to all my patrons by the way the support is amazing I, and this video wouldn't be possible without you uh, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next episode. Until then, have fun drawing. Bye.